Sure, I do want to emphasize the word pleasure. If you read it was pain, then don't read it. <laughs> but I never believe in reading any book from cover to cover, except, of course, my favorite work. So do not finish the whole book, really. Read a few essays and see what you can sort of get any pleasure out of it. Language is always culture. Language is never a vehicle. Language is always a culture. Even if you want to use English as for strictly functional utilitarian purposes, you still have to get into the culture. Even if you write technological manuals, you have to know the culture of technology. Uh, in computers, same thing. Certain words from technology get into the English vocabulary. Everybody uses the word input. Uh, input, output, you know, all that stuff. Yeah. So now I, I borrow the term in computer language. You, know. you connect, right? So now I'm called, called, I'm called my name somewhere called connected humanity. How do you make a connect? Uh, so that to me is crucial that no matter what language you do, no matter what time, no matter you, for what reason you want to learn English. There's always the background, there's always something behind it that you have to be curious about. You don't have to get into it. Is it what is behind it? That's the truth of it. Uh, but I think a lot of Hong Kong, especially officials, just pay only, attention only to face value so that they make a kind of a report just to make sure the figures are correct. Uh, everything is done so that both I jump can read it. Uh, but no, behind that it's all empty. Uh, there's no substance. Now you compare that to Chris Pattern's lecture. Chris Pattern, the one you have read just a week, is, is a, definitely a red more than both I jump. <laughs> uh, you can see, I mean, it comes out with good English. But now, even that is probably buying, maybe it's fun, I don't know. What the good year. When I was going to college, uh, you know, as a graduate I audited all the courses by all the 15 professors. Not necessarily listen to the content, but just listen to their style. They were great orators. Every one of them knew all of them. You know, Fleming, and, uh, this guy, David Lumi, English history, and quite a few maybe Victorian literature. Just Jungana, William Hunter, I'm awful as a lecturer in that sense. But you have all of that. Why do they train that way? So to me, if you want to read, do English wrong, read it aloud. Just same as in classical Johnny. Read it aloud. If it sounds good to your ears, that is good English. If it's unreadable, it's bad English. Read your official as it's all bad English. So for this, I would say the fastest would be three or four revisions. The slowest would be seven or eight or nine. Uh, usually an essay would take me about three to seven days, and each day would be about four or five hours, sometimes six or seven. So it really takes a lot of time, and I don't type well, so sometimes I waste a lot of time doing that. But the, the, the uh, frustration is that you know there's a phrase there, but you forget about it. That, that's the hard part. I know I'm finding that phrase. It's somewhere lurking in the back of my mind. From some essay I read, uh, but I just cannot recall. Uh, so I have to put the right idea in the right place. That's the hardest. Uh, uh, maybe this is almost a thankless job. Um, and this is basically why I cannot write so fast. Although in Chinese, I dash it off. But then I realized that because of the influence of my English, now I'm doing revision, even with my Chinese. So now it's getting harder and harder, so I'm writing less of